What is up you guys? So today we're going to go over a tutorial on how to use Think or Swim Mobile. Now I want to preface this video by saying that Think or Swim Mobile is not good. Um, if you could, you know, get a computer, if you don't have access to a computer, I understand, but TOS on the computer is a thousand times better than TOS Mobile. But if that's all you have, we're going to have to learn how to make it work. Now, I am using a paper trading account. <laughs> Actually forgot that as an experiment, I bought CZR like a month and a half ago and we're up $140,000. But today in this video, what I want to teach you is number one, how to kind of maneuver around the app, how to find options, how to price options, and also how to set up your indicators on your charts. So <laughs> let's start. The first thing is going to be your positions. So if you have any positions, you're going to come here to the positions tab down here at the bottom left. You're going to see here your symbol, your mark, your profit and loss, and your profit and loss on the day. So PL open means your profit and your loss since you opened the position. PL for the day is going to be your profit and your loss, obviously, on the day. And then here we're going to see on CZR. This is the stock that we have a position in. How many shares that we have? Now, where it says overall totals, if you have multiple companies that you're investing and trading in, um, all of these will be stacked on top of each other. Then once again at the bottom, we're going to see P&L day. We're going to see P&L open. We're going to see net liquid. Net liquid means this is how much liquidity, how much money you have um, you know, that, that's liquid in your account if you wanted to you know, take money out and maybe have some margin hold over that. Then you have available money. That's how much money you have that you can actually buy stock with. And then you have your equity. Now, this is your main hub for any position that you have. If you want, you can go over here to the left where it says watch list. And this is going to be your watch list. Now, if you want to actually look at a stock, you can come here and let's type in S P Y. So this is SPY. This is the S and P uh, 500 index from Spider. This is basically the overall market. Now, right here where it says one day, one minute, these are your time frames. So each candle on this specific chart is going to represent each one of these candles is going to be one minute. And this whole thing, if we zoom out, and to zoom in and out, you just push with two fingers and squeeze or pull away. Now, if you hit here and you were to go to six month, four hour, you were to zoom all the way out. This is six months in the stock market right here. These are your main time frames. If you're a swing trader, I have tons of videos on how to use time frames and all of that great stuff on the YouTube. So make sure you hit subscribe and check out all the videos that we have on here. Main swing trading time frames are going to be four hour and the daily. If you're day trading, I would highly, highly, highly recommend against day trading on TOS. I really would. It's not good. But we have the chart section here and we're going to go over how to set up your different um, indicators and everything in a minute. If you click the middle here, this is going to be your news. So any news that's coming out for the stock or the company, this is where it's going to be. You're also going to see options. Now this is going to be your options chain. And you're going to see right now we have uh, strikes set to all. I always have it set to all, but if you're using this, it's going to kind of be harder. Um, and then if you scroll down, you can see here's your bid, your ask, your last. Now, if you're somebody who wants to see your volume, you can click. I'll go back so you can see. You can click this little cog right in the middle. This is going to tell you everything that you have. So visible columns is your volume, open interest, percentage change. I have it set to that. If you don't have it set to that and you don't know how, you can go through here where it says hidden columns and you can pick which one you want and you can press the plus to add it. Say you wanted row or size or last size or net change or theta, you can add all of that. But right now the only thing I care about is percentage change, open interest and volume. Now as this loads, in order to actually see, let's uh, look at a strike. Say we want to get a put on the S&P 500. We're on today's date right here, May 8th. Let's not do that. That's a terrible idea. Never buy weeklies. Let's go to Let's look at a position I actually have, June 19th. And I have June 19th, 250 puts. So 
Here we are, 250, June 19th. Here's what the bid is, $2.31. The ask is $2.33. Now, if you scroll right, see up here at the top, it'll change. Now we can see the last price, the percentage change, the open interest, which is huge on this one, and the volume. So this is how you can see all those by scrolling left to right. Obviously, the same thing is with the calls. Now, if you want to understand the options chain, if you don't even know what any of this means, subscribe to the channel. I released a video. I'll put it down below and I'll stick it on the time cards right now, uh, right above this video, teaching you about the options chain. Now, if we go back up, let's set up our actual charts. Okay, so now before we start adding indicators, you're going to have a little cursor here. The way to use this is to hold it down with your finger and then you can drag it around. It's going to tell you the price level, high, low, range, volume. For now, let's just get this out of the way. Now, you're going to have, if you tap anywhere on the screen, this little sidebar is going to pop up. Now, we are going to click the little beaker laboratory thing. This is going to bring up your studies. We're going to start with nothing. Now, everybody uses different indicators if you want to learn what indicators I use and specifically how to set these up because I'm going to go pretty quickly through this. You can check out the video I have called Technical Analysis and how I set up my thinkorswim. So the first thing that we're going to want is an exponential moving average. So moving average exponential, you're going to press plus. Now we're going to go to your little cog and I use a 15 day. There we go. Now we're going to hit back. Now I want a simple moving average. There we go, hit edit. And I use a 50 day right here. That is what I'm going to want. Um, there we go. Now I'm gonna change the color. I always change my colors. Um, so my 50 day SMA is always a red. Here we go. Now I'm going to add another simple moving average. Now you got to realize this is going to look ridiculous um, on here because this is so small, but I'm just showing you the same setup that I use on my computer. Now we're going to use a 100 day SMA and we're going to click SMA here where it says plot settings. And I'm going to change this. This is green. So I keep this green actually. Then we're going to add a final simple moving average and this one is going to be 200 days all right and this color is always for me usually some kind of gold um let's it's kind of brownish green let's just go with this one it's whatever all right cool so now we have one exponential moving average set at 15 we have three smas which is a simple moving average set at 50 100 and 200 now I'm going to add, it's going to be a lot of things on this little screen, a MACD. Now on the MACD, if you go to settings, you don't have to do this. I always hit where it says here, show breakout signals. I just hit true. Okay. Now all it's going to do is show you a little arrow when a breakout signal happens. It's just easier to look at when I'm going through a whole bunch of different things. Now the final, well actually we have two more, RSI. And then you don't have to have this, but I usually do a TTM squeeze. This is just going to basically show you when a, a squeeze is happening. Um, a TTM squeeze is based off of Thinkorswim's proprietary algorithm. Um, and basically it goes off of Keltner channels and Bollinger Bands. Now this is the setup. This is going to look a little wonky. But I guess in reality, it's it's actually not that bad. I've not used this in a very, very long time. You could probably do without um, this, the, the TTM squeeze, if you don't understand what you're doing. You could probably, you know, do without it. Let's see, do I have my lock set? No, I should be able to turn the screen. So this is your setup. Here we are. Now this is if I turn my screen sideways. This will look a little bit easier. Um... But still, in order to see your RSI and your MACD and everything, it still looks like crap, in my opinion. So I'd actually probably use it straight up and down. So if I'm scrolling, I can at least kind of see this. Now, obviously, if we want to zoom in, here we are. We can actually see with um, SPY, we're kind of getting this head and shoulders pattern. Now, say I want to draw a trend line. Tap. You're going to go to this little draw tool. Hit new. 
And these are all your, your, your tools here. You have your price level, trend line, timeline, text, everything that you would normally have. You hit price level here. Tap my two points that I want to draw my price level. And so we hit done. And there we can see there's a price level. Um, let's say, what are we looking at? What was another one I was watching? It's like DLTR. Okay. Now we have a, we have a bit of a, uh, a wedge going on here. Say I wanted to make a trend line. I'd hit new. I'd go to trend line. I would click where I want to start the trend line. And I would click where I want to end the trend line. Now I hit done. And then for the bottom, I will click where I want to start the trend line. Hit drawing. Hit new. Hit trend line. Click where it starts. And then click up here. And then you can actually move it if you hold and drag your trend line and then hit done. Um, you can still do the same thing with Fibonacci retracements, anything. Um, this, like I said, it's not terrible, but I would never use this. If you are somebody who works at a job, um, you know, and you're trying to swing trade, I do understand this is this can at least help you a bit. I would never use this as your primary way to search for stocks or, um, you know, you trade for sure. I would never, I would never do that. But if you're working, it's something, you know, that, that will suffice. The last thing to go over is your orders. So if you have a working order, which means that you set a limit order, you set a stop loss, you set any type of order, but it hasn't filled yet, that will be here. Any order that has filled, if you click it, obviously will be filled. Any order that's canceled is obviously going to be under the canceled. All your orders, this is set for today. So obviously I didn't place any orders today and then saved orders. I don't know why I saved that order. This is where your orders are going to be. This is where your alerts are going to be if you set an alert. Now, one thing I would say to do, maybe if you have TOS at home and you work, set your alerts on TOS at home on your computer and then you'll actually receive them on the app. And then under more, this is like your account info, trader TV, balances, messages, all of that. So I hope that helped. Um, like I said, I don't recommend this. If you have to, I do understand, but I wouldn't recommend it. Having the setup, having understanding of what this works. The cool thing is though, um, if you draw all your trend lines and you set up all your charts on normal TOS, it will actually bring it all over here. So say I drew like all my trend lines on every stock I'm watching or stocks I'm in, I could quickly pop in here and be like, oh, uh, there's a price level here on SPY at 290. We actually broke up to it, fell down. Now we're holding. That's what's kind of cool about it is that it all it all you know brings it over. So that's not bad. So so to me, that's the one reason I would use it to do all my main charting on the computer and then and then just kind of watch it and view it from here. So I hope that helped, guys. Hit the like button. Comment down below. Are you using this? Are you planning on using this? Uh, give me some of your thoughts. Uh, also, thank you. We're almost at like 1,500 subscribers. It's really sick. So subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys next time. Peace.